Well, hello there and welcome to another episode of Scouting 5, recapping scouting news from around the world for the week of August 3rd, 2020. I'm Scouter Ken, and today I'm recording from St. Albert, Alberta. A British Columbia food market is relaunching its community fundraiser program as that Canadian province enters phase three of its reopening plan in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. Meridian Farm Market, which includes a store in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, has helped local groups and organizations there raise more than $50,000 through their community fundraising program. And especially now that there is a growing demand for easy to manage fundraisers, they have decided to relaunch that effort. Um, Because, of course, due to various COVID-19 related restrictions, um, some groups, scouts included, are not able to necessarily do the same sorts of fundraisers that they would have done prior to everything going into lockdown. The Meridian Market Program was temporarily suspended from mid-March until about June, the end of June, due to uh, the various pandemic restrictions that were put in place in the province of British Columbia. And uh, also to just allow residents of Maple Ridge to adjust to new social distancing measures and to stay at home as much as possible. But now that people are returning to work, the need for fundraisers is, of course, still very evident in some industries more urgent than ever. Scouts Canada was the first organization to jump on board again with the Maple Ridge market. Uh, And that program or the organization there, the the scout groups there have participated in the program uh, a couple of times already this year. The way it works is they sell Meridian gift cards for a couple of weeks to friends and family, and then the scouts recoup 30% of the total raised amount, which they can, of course, then put towards equipment and events and whatever else when scouting resumes in person in Canada, which is still looking like it'll be this fall. And we've heard a lot about the abuse cases that, uh, of course, have currently got the Boy Scouts of America in a state of Chapter 11 protection in the United States as they deal with a financial fallout from handling all of the many claims that have been filed against them. But it isn't just the Boy Scouts. Uh, the Girl Scouts also have uh, some unfortunate history coming to light in New York. Uh, one such story that broke recently was that of Alice Weiss Russell, who, while taking part in Girl Scouts, unfortunately also had to live with a dark secret. The husband of her troop leader was abusing her in the bathroom of the church basement where her Girl Scout troop held their meetings in the 1980s. She has detailed this ordeal in a lawsuit filed against the Girl Scouts of the USA, another one of the flurry of cases uh, making use of New York State's look-back window for making civil claims against abusers when the statute of limitations has run out and criminal charges are no longer an option. For Weiss Russell, it gives her a chance to be heard, um, because she didn't know that she had the chance at the time when she was young. And, of course, also it's a chance for her to hold the Girl Scouts accountable for what happened to her. She is accusing the organization of failing to protect her from a man described as a volunteer co-troop leader when she became a scout at the age of 11. The Girl Scout organization... She says, violated its own policies at the time by allowing the man, whose wife co-led the troop, to be involved with her troop. At the time, Weiss Russell uh, actually used her abuse, um, used might be the wrong term, but uh, it was a significant motivator for her to be a top seller of cookies so that she could earn the right to attend Girl Scout camps and thereby get away from this person. Uh, Around the time she was 18 and a few years removed from the scouts, she finally revealed to her mother what had happened and later tried to report the man to prosecutors, but that would be where the statute of limitations comes in. It had already run out on the abuses in question. More recently, her counselor encouraged her to take a look at the Child Victims Act, that look-back window aforementioned, as a way to get closure. A statement from the Girl Scouts of the USA simply said that they are aware of the complaint that was filed in New York, alleging that a Girl Scout was harmed in the 1980s during Girl Scout activities at Girl Scouts. There is, quote, nothing we take more seriously than the safety and well-being of our girls, and we maintain rigorous safety protocols. We are looking into this complaint and will address the matter with the utmost care and concern, end quote. The Boy Scouts of America is inviting kids to build their own adventure during an interactive family fun fest this weekend on August 8th. The free virtual event will feature experts like NASCAR drivey 
uh, driver Joey Logano and renowned former astronaut Dr. Bernard Harris. But the fun twist is that the kids who attend will call all the shots and decide how the event unfolds in real time. All kids taking part, scouts and non-scouts alike, are welcome to join the excitement and help build a high-speed Pinewood Derby car, design a rocket to launch in the backyard, and learn how to care for furry friends and win fun prizes. Interested families can join on Facebook Live during part or all of this activity-packed three-hour event, during which attendees will get to build a DIY water rocket. We'll also get an inside tour of Joey Logano's Ford Mustang GT, and they will help build that ultimate derby car that will compete for a championship title in the Ultimate BSA Speedway event happening on September 12th. The Boy Scouts have also partnered with adoptaclassroom.org, and so the event will also invite participants to thank and support teachers who are working to inspire safe learning environments in the coming school year. And finally, moving over to the UK, the first Honiton Scout Group celebrated World Scout Scarf Day a little differently this year as they took pictures from across the country. The idea behind uh, World Scout Scarf Day, by the way, is that all active and former scouts are encouraged to wear their scout scarves, neckerchiefs, neckers, in public to make the spirit of scouting visible. With the mantra, of course, being the idea being once a scout, always a scout. The date of the event, August 1st, commemorates the very first scout camp that was held on Brown Sea Island off of the coast in Do- of Dorset in 1907. Uh, I know I took part in it. A few people around uh, around the area took part in it that I'm aware of. Um, if you're part of any of the uh, Facebook groups for Scouts and Scouters, of course, there were lots of examples of people celebrating this all around the world. It's a really, really cool international event, something that all Scouts around the world are encouraged to take part of. Honiton Scouts, for their part, donned their yellow and green scarves and then sent in pictures from places such as Alton Towers, were out on a bike ride, or in their arsenal kits ahead of the FA Cup Final on Saturday. And that is all the news I have for you this week. Thank you again for listening, and until next time, be prepared. Be prepared.